Who shall I speak with first? That tower will have to be destroyed. That's how we procure Ikor. Look at them. You see now that she is a victim? Do not paint her a demon. She is just honestly doing her duty. Like you or me. You are protecting Aglaia. Do you really have something to say in her defense? I'm just still confused. What has she done to deceive you? Did she lie to you? Has she withheld the truth? I think you've learned everything you have without her help. Every conclusion you've made is your own. The whole town was at your disposal. She had to protect the town at any cost. That was her purpose. And yet, she tried to settle personal accounts with her deceased sister while claiming to fulfill a noble duty. Why? She came as a Lightbringer capable of resolving all our misfortunes with the power of her intelligence, and ended up being a traitor that tried to sell me another lie under the guise of the ultimate truth. You're just holding a grudge, Oinon. Nothing more. You only feel betrayed because you've entrusted yourself to her, but that was your own choice. It's unwise to brand someone a savior beforehand and then denounce them when they fail to live up to your expectations, even though they didn't know you had them. She knew. That's the difference. She knew and exploited my hopes. You brought this on yourself. Don't try to get even with Aglaia. If you want to destroy the town and save the tower only to get to her, and push her towards her demise, that would be unbecoming of you, Oinan. It is you who will turn into a spiteful puppeteer driven by his thirst for revenge. It's not about revenge. I just want to keep my word and to fulfill my mission fairly. Yes. Hmm. Should I say anything more? We have very different definitions of duty, then. What is your duty, Oinan? My duty is to find out the truth and to act in good conscience. That is what both the powers that be and the Inquisitor have demanded of me. Yet both of them have concealed the crucial truth. The town can be cleansed. I know how to make enough panacea now. It's so cold. Well, are you planning to make up your mind anytime soon? I would still like to know how you're going to keep the town intact. No, Bachelor, you will never understand this. You are very smart, but your intelligence holds you back. You will never come to understand my truth. Even though you're close to Maria and believe in Simon's abilities, you are still all too far from understanding the higher purpose of things. And my truth only comes together on that level. Why are you so displeased with my intelligence? Your victory is a victory of pure reason. Look, just like we all, you have reconstructed a picture of the whole universe and found the root of what happened. But your picture is austere and bare bones. You have merely come to understand the mechanics of the events. You are generally a mechanic of a medic. Who are you then? Me and Barak were different, and much more profound, believe me. Your world is mechanically consistent and rational. You want to keep what is reasonable to keep, and to destroy what is necessary to destroy in order to complete your tragic mission with minimal risk. Are you laughing?
laughing at me. I want to keep the polyhedron. What can be less logical? You want to keep the polyhedron out of respect for the kindred genius who has calculated the mechanics of a miracle trap, a contraption able to capture what should not be captured. The polyhedron is only a cold mathematical masterpiece made of glass to you. It's a very different thing to me. Look at you. It's like you're possessed by someone else. Perhaps it's not the same me you knew before. There is more than one me. A lot, perhaps. We've got the same pretty face. But who knows whose will is behind it right now. That is something that I've heard throughout the entire game from various people, is that it almost seems like there's different Claras. There's more than one Clara. Enough. Do whatever you please. Well, I don't like the idea of destroying everything. Of destroying the tower, as the Heruspex wants me to do. I also don't like the idea of taking something on faith, as Clara wants me to do. But... If she says she can save the tower, I am inclined to go with her. There's little time left. I am indeed powerless, as you can see. I'm accused of having arranged your discovery. I've lost my vote of confidence. So tell them whose discovery it is, for the laurels are yours. Are you in doubt? I'm not sure if I have the evidence to back this up, but I'm going to run with it. Your diabolical deception was so simple. The cause and the source. It's so easy to put these very different things together, Inquisitor. But they are not the same. In this case, they are. It's strange that you have failed to see that. This place is a utopia. That is, an abuse of nature. The utopia must be destroyed. It's evil. What is a utopia, Aglaya? Let's talk for the last time. What is provoking your hatred so much? I am a humanitarian. My duty is to save people, not kill them. I only condemn a few to death for the sake of the many. Now I'm offering you to save the happiness of several thousands hardly shedding any blood at all. A utopia will demand more and more sacrifices, you know. Even this utopia. But why do you think this place is a utopia? Nobody conducts social experiments here. Look, this place is more natural than nature. Utopias are usually constructed to embody perfect justice, liberty, or economical thrift. This one, however, is different. This town is not a place that does not exist. It's a place that cannot exist, mustn't exist. Here's where the cause and the source are the same. mustn't exist? Yes. It's a phenomenon beyond the habitual reality, contradicting the laws of common sense and embodying that which mustn't be known to, felt, and seen by men. And yet it has been created and materialized at human discretion. What does this shabby town have to do with it? Aren't you overselling it by calling it a utopia? Let's get back to the matter at hand. A wonderful town is suddenly beginning to die. No one knows why. Why this one? The one that has managed to produce a wonder. The most curious, the most mysterious, inhabited by the most talented people. What did they do to deserve this? I'll tell you. I'm all ears. At the persistent pleasure of the capricious powers that be, the miracle that has been accidentally embodied as the polyhedron is forced to stay there, captured by the flesh of the town that has nurtured it, 
feeding it with its resources, people, and hot blood. This flesh has become its womb and its prison. I want to read this again. Or parts of it anyway. The miracle that has been accidentally embodied as the polyhedron, forced to stay there. So the town is feeding the miracle. You're being too metaphoric. What does that have to do with my choice and the epidemic? Enslaved miracles die not out of anyone's malice. That is just their nature. You can't hold a miracle with your hands. You can only hold its corpse. The idea is not new. Let us have a closer look at the disease, the embodiment. Embodiment of this logic. Is it good or evil? Why has it come to the town? I wouldn't say the... I mean, I wouldn't say the disease is good or evil. It's just a disease. It just is. Do you consider it to be good? Why did you come to the town at the same time, then? You are, by all definitions, a hero. A miracle maker, almost. It was the powers that be that have tried to make you detain a miracle here. Not the poor, obsessed canes. They've only played their part. They represent their own force. But you... Do you really want to go back to being a slave? The powers that be are bending you to submission according to their own design. Now that I have to agree with. Do you really want to go back to being a slave? If I do what the powers that be want me to do, am I just a slave? This is what they want me to do. After all, they asked me to save the town. Hmm. Hmm. You are obsessed with revenge, Aglaya. Revenge is a bad companion in the search for the truth. Then tell him, Daniel. There he stands, waiting for your word. A puppet, just like... Guide his weapons. No one has heard a single word of recommendation from me yet. I'm relying on you completely. Just like I said. And heed my warnings. I remember everything we talked about. Be silent. That does it. I'm gonna break some. So, Bachelor, it was neither greed nor plotting nor circumstance that has informed your choice, but your conscience alone. I have been given orders to level everything here. But if that's not necessary, I am willing to trust your judgment, risking my life and honor, for I am merciful. Where shall I point the weapon? Okay, so you are the choice man. I'm not ready to make a choice yet. That is wise. You will have neither a second chance nor a replay option. I advise caution. Maria. What? I knew you would come. When will you begin to execute your design, Maria? I've already begun, my Daniel. When the night falls and the wind scatters the smoke above the scorched earth, and the dust of the building's demolished settles, you will see several new constellations light up in the sky. They will plunge their light towards us, and when the first specks of this light reach the constellations of the polyhedron, a miracle will happen. What will they be like? How are you going to call them? I'll see. But I expect them to be mostly red. Ruby, scarlet, crimson, carmine, merlot, mahogany, vermilion, garnet, rose, pink, burgundy. Perhaps you may even notice something familiar in the structure of these constellations. Where will these constellations come from? They've existed for a long time already. People just couldn't see them before, because their light was hurrying towards us from far beyond. Now the first rays of these stars are about to reach our surfaces. 
we will see their light reflected in the specular planes of the preserved polyhedron. Why are you here, Maria? You ask strange questions. Don't you see that this is my town now? I am the power here. I am the mother, and since I am to give birth to a new town, I want to witness the demise of the old one. This is my duty. I am the last of the Canes. What about your brother? Aren't you going to share your power with him? There's nothing to be done about it. They have to free up the space for the new guests. My brother will become embittered, betray me, and rebel against me. But I will find a way to deal with him. He will cower behind Capella's back willingly when my mother's eyes frown and glare at him. Have you become a mistress already? No, I haven't. You won't see it here. Unless you're planning to stay, of course. Oh, God. Do I want to stay? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like what the hell's the point of anything? Again, I come right back to the... If I'm just a toy, what does it matter what I do? What happens after? When the children, the powers that be, are done with me. I'm staying. Have I missed anything I want to say? The town can be cleansed. I know how to make enough panacea now. I'm sick. The world is going dark. Is it true that the Commander has acknowledged you as a Heavenly Harbinger and is now obeying your will? Would I ever have the right to be called a Heavenly Harbinger if I had my own will? Does the Commander serve me? How stupid you are, Bachelor, when speaking of matters of this kind. The Commander is a Knight. His heart is sensitive in a very unique way. He has realized who is to be served now. What is to happen to him now? I am not impartial to his fate, too. Are you afraid that he will die? Don't. The powers that be have in fact given his an order no less hypocritical than the one you've received. He will be spared, I think. They just need to find a new battle for him. So many fires, so many abysses he has to walk through. Each of them eagerly prepared by the powers to become his grave. Yet he is to overcome all hardship. With your help, is that what you're trying to say? I shall accompany him everywhere. In every campaign I shall stand by his side. And he will always know where to strike, for that will not be a choice for him. Terrible and numerous will his foes be, yet his force to become unconquerable, empowered by my spirit. So... You want to start a holy war? Under what banner? Who will believe you, Changeling? Are you afraid that too much blood will be spilled before the light of truth triumphs over the world? Don't. Yes, guns will destroy many before the war is ended. But when it ends, it will end forever. All earthly kingdoms will unite and exist in consent. And there will be but one law. All of a sudden, I don't really like going with the Changeling's idea, either. Jesus. I shouldn't have brought you to the Cathedral, Changeling. Thankfully, I was smart enough to talk to you before making a decision. Neither the town nor the tower have to be sacrificed. Everything can be saved. I am suddenly feeling a rebellious spirit to rebel against the powers that be. I don't want to be just a fucking pawn in their game. Just a discarded doll.
What was that? I don't think there's anything more to say. It will be as you choose. <sighs> there's more life in me that can be lived. What are my decisions? We can't let cheats play with our free will. Four decisions. Either let the settlement be destroyed, but there's no reason to hurt the polyhedron. The survivors will find shelter there until we vaccinate them and the epidemic dies out. Or you only have to destroy the polyhedron to put an end to the disease spreading. There's no point in raising the whole town. Or, there's no need to destroy anything. We can do all together without gunfire and preserve this world as it is. Or, I've come to announce my decision. There will be no decision. I forego the right to make a choice. I will not decide the town's fate and present my arguments to you. So, destroy the settlement, but not the polyhedron. Destroy the polyhedron, but not the settlement. Destroy nothing. Or recuse myself from making any sort of decision. Oh boy. This is without a doubt the biggest decision I've made in the entire game. I am... I am very much feeling rebellious. I feel very rebellious with the powers that be. What do they want me to do? They want me to take care of the sickness. And the sickness is, without a doubt, coming from, or at least unleashed, by the polyhedron. Hmm. So what could I do to be rebellious? Well, if I destroy nothing, that's very rebellious. But that means going with Clara, and Clara seems to want to start some sort of a holy war, where she mind controls the commander, for he has no choice in his decisions, as she said. Sounds like the commander, Alexander Block, I believe his name is, would be a puppet for Clara. And she just sounds downright... Well, crazy, for lack of a better term. I don't see any point in destroying the town without destroying the polyhedron. If you're gonna do that, then you might as well just not destroy anything. <sighs> oh my god, this is a really, really, really hard decision. Hmm. Well, it's gonna be one of two. Either destroy the polyhedron, or don't destroy anything. So one of these two. I do not want to be a doll for the powers that be. Fuck the powers that be. There's no need to destroy anything. We can do all together without gunfire and preserve this world as it is. You believed Clara. You passed the right to decide to her. I want the Inquisitor to hear this. I do. Speak, Clara. Bachelor Dankowski, are you sure you have nothing else to tell me? I'm sure, Commander. 
The choice has been made. The polyhedron will not survive without the town. If the children no longer come to play inside its walls, then it will expire. Its light will snuff out if the simple-minded townsfolk no longer see it as a source of illumination, a miracle, a door to the other world. Hmm, so it sounds like if I destroyed the town without destroying the polyhedron, the town would die. True, the town is hardly more than a machine, pumping death from the very bowels of hell. This, however, is the only town where the polyhedron could possibly exist. Let things remain as they are. The constant threat of pandemic is a fair price to pay for the chance of something like this tower to appear. I haven't slept for three nights in a row. I don't think I'll manage another one. What do I do now? Do I go outside? My path will... Do I wait for the day to end? think. Oh, I can't go back inside. I think I just wait for the day to end. I must wonder, can I go back to speak with the powers that be? Well, I try to go back inside the polyhedron and unfortunately you're not allowed to get down to the, the lower part of the polyhedron. So I guess I won't be speaking with the powers that be again. Okay. It's a little over three hours till the end of the day. That's it? It feels so sudden. Okay. Before I end this, there's a couple things I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to consider that ending that I just got as basically my ending that's that's the one I chose and the one I'm gonna consider as the true ending to my playthrough but I am very very curious what the other endings are so let's try them all out and see what they are the weapon security must be tightened let's do the other kind of main option 
which is to destroy the polyhedron. I'm surprised to hear that from you. Can you prove that it's a sensible choice? Haruspex will. I trust him. He will speak the language of the scary tales of our long-lost childhood, the language I have forgotten already. Let him tell you of his relationship with this tribal kin. That's the recipe for saving the town, as far as I understand. Now we shall speak with you, Artemy Barak. Bachelor Dankovsky, are you sure there's nothing else you'd like to tell me? I'm sure. Choice has been made. Fine. Let the town remain. Let the broken circles come whole. Let the interrupted processes resume. The wisdom of life is superior to that of people, so life should be allowed to proceed in its due course. The utopia is doomed. Feeble men should not be tempted with miracles. There is no point to forcibly preserve something whose very idea is destroyed by any kind of coercion. The tower, the reason, and the outset of the calamity will be demolished. Now let's try destroying the settlement, but not destroying the polyhedron. So you think the town is doomed? I do. The soil underneath it is soaked with poison. We're very lucky that the ground here is so fastidious. Plow every inch of it up with shells, shake it, and pull its rocks out. Split it into cracks so that no one would ever dare re-inhabit this land. This side of the river is uninhabitable. I see. And you believe that the tower will make it through the bombardment despite it, its base being so thin? Yes. The tower must keep its balance. I've studied its structure and I'm inclined to believe that it's rather earthquake resistant. It's like a weight on a steel spring. If no shell explodes on the opposite bank of the river, the polyhedron will remain intact. Shells will only fall where I point them to fall. Let it be so, then. Can you prove that this is a good way out? I can. Here are my arguments. A bacteria specimen, the vaccine, the blueprints, and the map charting the source of the pest. You sure there's nothing else you'd like to tell me? I'm sure. Let the tower remain, whatever the cost. Nothing like it will ever be built again. It's not a mere building but a symbol. It allows us a hope of a possibility that some false truths of our ill-fated epic might be overthrown. It is a delicate fortress that holds a veritable proof that, however well-established our notions of possibility are, they still fail to account for what may or may not exist. This is the bastion I'm willing to fight for. As for the powers that be, they are going to regret their hypocrisy. They were so determined to force me to observe the promise I gave not to disappoint. The town they are so fond of will be reduced to rubble. This I've spoken. 
Hmm, it sounds like this actually may have been the most rebellious option of all. did it, it was a free choice. We acknowledge the victory of the player. It is indeed miraculous. The exit is clear. It shouldn't have happened. The miracle must be real. Uh, I'm... I'm playing now. This ending seems much more extensive than the others, and it's also giving me chills because I've... Well, not only because of what's laying in front of me, which is very disturbing. It's all the main players. And they're all dead. That leaves the question of... Who am I? If I'm no longer the Bachelor, the Bachelor is there dead. Who am I? Also, the thing I realized during that ending cutscene is notice how when the town was destroyed, it turned into uh, what was left of the town was just those blown apart, floating sort of buildings, the stairways to nothing. Guess what? Those blown apart stairways to nothing were already in the town. There were a couple of those throughout the town already. That tells me this has happened before. That the children have played in this sandbox many times. They've made other towns, other worlds, and destroyed them. This seems to be the most extensive ending. That makes me wonder if this was kind of the intended one. Not that the others were meant to be fail states or bad endings, but it kind of feels like it. the constellations. That was the constellations, wasn't it?
new town will be built. All right, there's one more. We can't let cheats play with our free will. The decision where we don't make a decision. We won't be able to make this choice without you. We are in a deadlock. The Inquisitor is holding me back. I won't let her act. It seems to me that she is plotting to laugh her last dying laugh and let the disease loose in the end. Horuspex is acting on the Inquisitor's behalf. Clara is compromised. The town is doomed. I've said everything. Farewell, Commander. Nothing keeps me from entering the cathedral. I have a feeling, however, that the cathedral is the real trap. Not the theater, as the warning suggested. I renounce my freedom of choice. Let someone else decide. Let it be as it may. That's interesting. This is giving me the three stars. I don't believe any of the other options ever gave me the three stars. The three stars indicate that I've finished the quest. Is this the only way to finish the quest? Does it have some significance? Looks like the worst option of all is to do nothing. That was by far the most disturbing ending out of all of them. Jesus. <sighs> what do I even say after finishing a game like this? Nothing I say could possibly live up to anything that happened in this game, I feel like. I love Pathologic. My god, I'm so glad that they released the classic HD edition and fixed the translation so that it was actually complete enough and sensible enough for me to actually finish it. What a special game. I have never, ever played anything like it. Certainly the game has many flaws, but... This is easily one of the most interesting games I've ever played. Just beautiful and awe-inspiring, and I just don't even know what to make of it. There's like a million layers to it. It's like peeling an onion, trying to figure out what actually happened. I'm just trying to think, what actually happened in my ending, my first ending. What happened at the end when I decided to not destroy anything? It looked like the children kept bringing offerings and stuff to the sand, to the sandbox. It looked like it kept getting bigger and bigger. As if whatever I, I can only call it like a... this miracle. This miracle isn't... it doesn't seem like a good miracle. The fact that this 
sandbox apparently can bring people to life or something. Doesn't seem like a good thing. And whatever this thing is, it looked like they kept coming back to it and kept feeding it. And it kept growing. Almost like they were just feeding a, a cancer of the earth. I was just growing larger and larger. And I can't help but think about the powers that be. And how they talked about how they kept, um... What, they were coming there after uh, going to a funeral? That must have some significance, right? That this sick, dying world was created out of perhaps the grief of the children? I just keep coming back to that and thinking about it. Yeah. I think it's time to go read some story interpretations and stuff like that for this game. All I can say is that was beautiful. That was a wonderful game. It's one of the least, <laughs> kind of ironically, it's one of the least pleasant games I've ever experienced. It certainly is no fun. It's, it's not a fun game in any way. It's a miserable game. But it's good. It's damn, damn good. So, if you have watched all the way through all, all 47, 48, 49 episodes, depending on how many episodes I'm going to split this last part off into, yeah, if you've been with me for this journey, then I just want to say thank you very much for joining me. It's been one hell of an experience, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.